as you sign these contracts, you need to think about. But I want to assure you, from what Nimeski has from today, to find a gazi. Marafiki wa raizu wa zamani, to find a gazi. Kipimo ni kazi. Peke yake. Mire Nimeski na mina kubalia na raiz, kazi. Let us work. Let us do what we need to do to help the president. And he has set the peace. Let us follow the leader. Because he is the leader. If his peace is to keep time, let's keep time. If his peace is to work hard, is to work hard. If his peace is to go up country and explain to the people, let us go and explain to the people. Mimi nimesema yangu, nitamutafuta individually, pahali niona iko shida ni mueleze. With those few remarks, I request you to be upstanding and help me usher in the President of the Republic of Kenya, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Let's take our seats. Asante Nisana. Mr. Deputy President, uh, Prime Cabinet Secretary, Ministers, PSS, our good ambassadors, the representation of the Council of Governors, the representation of Parliament present, chairs of parastatals and CEOs. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I welcome you to this very important occasion um, of signing our performance contracts. As uh, has been said, um, the people of Kenya are the ultimate employers of all of us. They pay our salaries, they pay our allowances, and um, because they do, they legitimately demand of us that we meet our commitments, that the program that we sold to the people of Kenya we keep, we perform, we implement, and we actualize what we committed ourselves to. Let me say that, uh, before I make my statement, that there are two fundamental things that I want us, the people who are the senior most uh, members of uh, our administration, that we have a historic moment as a country to make Kenya the great country that we always wanted it to be. We've discussed, there's been many analogies as to what countries that started with us, we've discussed about Malaysia, We've discussed about Singapore. We've discussed about the Asian Tigers. And we have made all manner of references. I want to say that this is the historic moment for Kenya to be the great nation that we always wanted it to be. And history has given us the opportunity, those of us seated here, to be the men and the women that will bring the greatness of our country to where it is and to where it should be. <clears throat> it's a very defining moment from where I sit because I see the great opportunity for our country. And that is why, for the first time in Kenya, we are in the midst of the most vigorous national debate in our nation's democratic history. For a few years now, the cost of living has been an oppressive yoke around the necks of most Kenyans, and its most punitive effects have been felt by vulnerable people, most of them at the bottom of our economic pyramid. 
the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, not only brought home the intense local impact of tremendous external shocks occasioned by disruption of international supply chains and markets, it also revealed the limitations of the prevailing economic model and exposed the full extent of the nexus between the state and citizens. For those who had jobs, majority of whom were in the, formal sect in the informal sector, the prices of essential commodities rose beyond the purchasing power of their incomes, demonstrating the precarity of the majority of our people's livelihoods and serious illness brought with it the ever-present threat of poverty arising from exorbitant medical costs. Although there was opportunity to use the COVID-19 downtime, downtime to increase agricultural productivity, subsidizing farm inputs was not a priority compared to vendor-driven pandemic-related expenditure, which eventually failed due to wastage, corruption, non-performance, and delays. Other measures and programs undertaken during this time exacerbated the suffering of Kenyans at the bottom and made many people question the priorities of their government. This was the beginning of the national conversation that subsists to this minute and has anchored robust engagements which defined the last election and subsequent political and policy discourse. The primary bone of contention is who does the government work for? An old and favored approach to answering this question was to pledge to do more, in fact, much more of the same old policies, programs, projects, and interventions that have failed at such a high cost that poverty, unemployment, and underdevelopment are actually intolerable. The other option was to embrace a bold new vision and undertake ambitious interventions aimed at transforming the country's economy by creating jobs, increasing incomes, while ensuring that food, shelter, and health are available to everyone, especially those of us who are not privileged. I say this in reflection because a trend was created that using other people's money, which is debt, is a very innovative way of delivering government programs, which is the biggest fallacy because as a result of using people's, other people's money and contracting debt left, right, center, front and back, we drove our country almost to the brink of debt distress. And it became our first assignment to steady the economy of our country and to pull back our country from going over the cliff. I am very proud today that almost a year in, our economy has steadied. I am very proud today that the interventions that we have taken, though not popular, though very painful, but I want to say here, they have paid off. Today, our country 
is on fairly sound economic footing. And our decision to do more around collecting our own taxes, to do more about living within our means, and to borrow less, and to work on our fiscal deficit, I must admit has paid off better than I even thought myself. And I want to thank the people of Kenya for having confidence in the measures that we have taken. We engage Kenyans all over the length and breadth of our country on the most urgent priorities and the best ways and means of implementing them. Ultimately, it became clear that the new approach to national development was not only going to be ambitious and visionary, it was also going to be radical and transformative. To begin with, the plan was going to turn the national development agenda upside down. From the traditional top-down model that is essentially elite-centric to a bottom-up model that is citizen-centric and people-centered. Secondly, the model would aim to positively impact millions of Kenyans at the bottom by focusing interventions where the greatest number find their livelihoods, which is the informal sector and especially agriculture and the hustler economy. Thirdly, a new model will entail measures to not only create millions of jobs and increase incomes, but also reduce the cost of living by mitigating the cost of energy, transport, shelter, health care as a share of household incomes. We agreed with Kenyans that to deliver this transformative model, five sectors would form the core pillars of our agenda to bring down the cost of living, eradicate hunger, create jobs, expand the tax base, improve our foreign exchange balance, and deliver inclusive growth, and to do so from the bottom up. These sectors are agriculture, micro and small medium enterprise economy, affordable housing, universal health care coverage, and digital superhighway with a creative economy. These form the pillars of better our plan, the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, which sets out my performance contract with the people of Kenya that I entered on behalf of all of us to be delivered by the entire government. The terms of the contract are fairly straightforward. In return for paying their due taxes in a timely fashion, the citizens of this country not only expect but are entitled to receive the benefits of all government services in a prompt and satisfactory manner. By virtue of our governing mandate, we are committed to the performance of our part of the contract and so in full. I have talked to many Kenyans as I travel out of my office. I was in Moranga the other day and speaking to ordinary people, they have confirmed that they do not want their country saddled with unnecessary punitive debts. They were very clear to me. And they have committed that, yes, they are going to pay taxes, but they demand, and rightfully so, delivery of 
every service that is due to them and that nobody steals their money. That they were unequivocal. The robust national debate over the bottom up economic, uh, economics trans, uh, demonstrated that the people of Kenya are highly engaged with the policies that affect their interests and are ready to give good policies a chance. The animation which characterized national and parliamentary debate over Finance Act is, in my view, had more to do with the absence of a consistent culture of promise keeping in our politics and of faithful alignment between government policy and the people's aspirations. As a result, there are Kenyans who do not even believe that a government has an obligation to deliver its pledges and view manifestos and campaign platforms as empty political performances and meaningless tricks and noise. You know, because for a very long time, we've made campaign pledges to be what you say looking for votes when you don't actually mean to deliver on them. In fact, there are even leaders, including members of the clergy, who have been sympathetic and tried with the best intentions to suggest ways of enabling the government and myself to run away from some of the commitments we made in the campaigns. Some clergy have said, I, I, I think you, it's okay, you, you, you made a promise, but it's difficult to keep, so just, you know. And it's because of the culture that has been built. Many people did not believe that we are going to have a hustler fund. Many people did not believe that we are going to reduce the cost of fertilizer. Many people did not believe that we are going to hire 55,000 teachers in under one year. Because commitments, promises have been made with no intention to keep any of those promises. And, and I, I see the, 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 the difficulty that people have when we have to make difficult decisions. They think that we have overcommitted ourselves. I want to tell the people of Kenya, the commitments we made, the promises we made, we will keep each and every one in full. Some Kenyans are even suspicious that we are implementing revenue measures without any intention to deliver any public services at all, let alone the elaborate agenda that we have set out. While I appreciate the goodwill and concern, I wish to state in no uncertain terms in order to clear any confusion and to give comfort to all Kenyans that this administration is committed, fully committed, to the implementation of the pledges and commitments contained in our bottom-up economic transformation agenda plan. We promised that our government would defend the Constitution and constitutionalism institutionalize issue-based, performance-oriented politics and implement better our plan. We shall not run away from any of the commitments therein. We will keep them. This is the context in which we have negotiated, developed, and are today going to witness the signing of the first generation of ministerial performance contract for the financial year 2023-2024.
Performance contracting in the Government of Kenya is now in its 20th year of continuous implementation, and over that time, the performance contracts have evolved into a robust tool employed by government to, uh, for measuring the performance of ministries, departments, and agencies in serving uh, the people of Kenya. I don't know whether it is because these performance contracts have been going on for 20 years that many people maybe mistakenly think that it is a ritual. And that is why people resort to the old incompetent excuses that there was traffic for them not to be in a public, in a, the most important public function. We have a job because we have a contract. If you cannot keep time with your employer, you have basically dismissed yourself. I mean, it's just as simple as that. So, for those who came late, who are members of the executive, I will be expecting a written explanation, and it should not include matters of traffic. on why they do not take these performance contracts seriously. Because if you do not take this performance contracting seriously, it means we do not take the contract with the people of Kenya on performance seriously. And that can be a very serious indictment on anybody. The performance contracts framework has also been critical in enabling government identify, collect, collate, and analyze vital information connected with the performance of public agencies. The overall result of this is that government decision making has become increasingly evidence-based and public officers have become increasingly aware of their accountability for actions and omissions, achievements, and mistakes. We have resolved to enhance the overall performance management framework and to leverage its tremendous potential by incorporating the actualization of the better plan, the government performance contracting and delivery mechanism. Our objective is to achieve the highest levels of efficiency and effectiveness in the delivery of public services ensure accountability in the utilization of public resources, improve the mechanisms of service delivery, realign public agencies with their core mandates, and accelerate the, com uh, the completion of programs and projects. We are here to declare our intention to implement our commitments, serve Kenyans, and to do so in a highly systematic manner. Our performance shall be robust. Our purpose is to make sure that the stewardship of public authority and resources will be responsible, transparent, and accountable. We desire to actualize the twin mandates of citizens' rights and government's obligation by governing well in a people-centric, results-oriented manner. We have made sure that every ministry, department, and agency has aligned their performances and policies with the fourth medium-term plan of the Kenya National Vision 2030, which now incorporates key government priorities under the five better pillars. It is now a fundamental duty of cabinet secretaries, principal secretaries, chief executive officers of state corporations, and the principles of tertiary education institutions to implement obligations under their performance contracts by taking every measure to execute key government priorities on time and with the allocated resources. In keeping with our commitment to deliver, the performance contracts have been perfected through a rigorous process of vetting key priorities and ring fencing their funding through the National Treasury. 
every instrument that shall be derived from these contracts for implementation by MDAs must replicate this model, and it shall be the duty of cabinet secretaries to ensure full implementation and conformity. As I stated in April, during the launch of performance evaluation report, performance man management shall be implemented throughout government, and no public institution funded through the exchequer will be exempt. You will recall that in our manifesto, we set out the principles that would guide the implementation framework of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, which is prioritization, sequencing, and financing. Today, we are translating this aspiration to actionable instruments and at the same time unpacking them into the following commitments. Absorption of allocated funds including externally mobilized resources. And we have indicated in the performance contract which every minister has a copy and I also have a copy. So it will be easy for us to know who is doing what and who is not doing whatever. Measures to reduce the levels of pending bills. You know what we need to do about pending bills. Digitization of government services. I already asked every minister, every PS, to make sure their ministries, state departments, um, parastatals agencies under them work with the ministry responsible ICT and, uh, and interior to make sure that we move all government services to the digital platform for purposes of efficiency for purposes of ease of delivery of those services and making sure that all public resources are accountable are accounted for. I do not expect that in the next 90 days, before the end of this year, I do not expect any government service to continue in the manual framework. I do not expect. Every government service must be not just on the digital platform, it must be delivered on the digital platform. From first today, I do not expect any other pay bill for any government agency except what we agreed, a government pay bill that will be manned by Treasury. I hope we are all clear. We did agree that we and all other pay bills will be shut down. And if there will be one that will be operating after today, let me not say beyond that. Right? Because for purposes of efficiency, we are on a digital platform so that there are no lost files, there are no gray areas, there are no corners that is gathering dust. We want to make sure that um, we can demonstrate productivity. It's also important that we complete projects. We have projects in ministries, in state departments that are 20 years old. I told the Ministry of uh, Housing, we have markets, 180 markets, that were started 15 years ago under the ESP program. We have now committed resources this year. All those markets should be completed as a priority in the next one year. All those markets should be ready. Matters environment are going to be front and center of what we will be doing as well. 
So the, natural, the National Tree Cover Restoration Campaign is part of the delivery of every ministry and state department. We are looking forward to working on internship and industrial attachment. Again, the ministry concerned, we have agreed on what to do. This was our intention five years ago, but it was not delivered because of the old culture of making commitments that we didn't have any intention to keep. On internships this time round, we must keep our commitment. I have already engaged the private sector. We have agreed. Government is going to deliver progressively to 20,000 internships every year. The private sector have committed to me that they will deliver up to 50,000 internships every year. We want to see how we can grow this to 100,000 and make sure that we give a chance to many young people coming out of college, coming out of our universities, to practice what they have learned, either for a year or two years, acquire some experience, and find their way into uh, employment and also into the market. Access to government procurement opportunities by young people, women, and persons living with disability. As I have said with clarity, that for a very long time, we invested a lot of resources in our human capital, and rightfully so. This year, we have committed 600 and 28 billion Kenya shillings for the education of the people of Kenya. That is huge resources. We are deploying additional resources in the hiring of additional teachers. We are deploying additional resources in making sure that we deliver on our TVET program. We are almost doubling resources that will go to our university education, and we are pulling all our universities from being settled with debt because uh, of the old funding model. But different from the past, this year, we not only have a program on education and training, we also this year have a program on what happens when our children come out of college, come out of school, and come out of our universities. That's why we have clarity on how we are going to create jobs this year. We have clarity that we are going to have a clear plan on how to create jobs. And I expect that every ministry and every department will be aligned whether it is our housing plan to create a million jobs, whether it is our digital space and digital jobs and our JIRA and ICT hubs to create digital jobs, whether it is the Ministry of uh, uh, Labor working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and all other departments that uh, work with human capital development in, uh, in that space for um, our foreign employment opportunities, targeting another a million or so jobs, that whole ecosystem is now going to be part of what we must deliver as government. We must deliver the jobs as much as we are delivering on education and training. We are also going to work on the project and program of local content. As you've all seen, we've talked about Build Kenya, Buy Kenya, Build Kenya. We've talked about local content. For the first time in this year's uh, finance bill, we are making fiscal intervention to make sure that we expand our manufacturing as a percentage of GDP in our country by deliberately 
discouraging imports that we can produce locally, whether it is cement, whether it is steel, whether it is furniture, whether it is fish, and all the other things that we've always imported when we can manufacture them locally using local talent, local expertise, local resources, and building our local manufacturing and industrial capacity. I am very proud that uh, we are now moving in, 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 that, uh, in that direction as, uh, as, as part of what we must do. As I mentioned before, many Kenyans have been disappointed by the endless cycles of unfulfilled pledges. Because of our long history of white relevant projects and corruption scandals, some see these commitments as vendor-driven kickback rackets, disguised conspiracies to embezzle public funds. There are people who are listening to us out there. When they hear we are going to do kipes, county aggregation industrial parks, they hear we are going to do markets, we are going to build this road, we are going to deliver on that dam. They think it's an opportunity for them to go and steal public money. I want to tell you in broad daylight, eyeball to eyeball, that will not happen. Please, good people. Yes. I have had a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with my cabinet. I want to do the same with the rest of the government bureaucracy from PSS down to directors. It will not be business as usual. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that there will be no money to steal. There is only money to deliver on the programs, on the projects, on the aspirations of the people of Kenya. A political culture of poor promise keeping as well as endemic corruption has done significant damage to our social fabric by eroding trust in government and widening the rift that separates citizens' aspirations from government policy. We cannot afford to wait and see where this road may lead because it has already brought us to a very terrible place. It is time that this comes to an end once and for all. And I promise you, it will come to an end. For those who have engaged in corruption incorrigibly, because I, I know, for example, the people in the procurement space. The, the, there was uh, one lady in one of the roads departments, corrupt to the core, to the extent that she could not be transferred by anybody, even by the minister, because if she was transferred, she will go to court, buy the court process, and make sure that she's returned. That is the kind of chronic where corruption has taken us. I hope Mr. Kipchumba Murkomen and uh, Buanambogwa, I hope that lady no longer works for the government of Kenya. Yeah. We, we cannot have such. There are people who have made government offices their private property. You try to transfer them elsewhere, they go to court, they go to some agency, you find them back. It will not happen. Yeah? 
those, those kind of things, we must put them behind us. We are servants of the people of Kenya. We are not their masters. And we serve at the pleasure of the people of Kenya. We don't serve at their mercy. So, uh, it's going to be different. It is going to be different. I promise you it's going to be different. And uh, it's, not be, it's not going to be business as usual. And we are not going to wait until public money is lost. The moment there is signs that you have intentions <laughs> of doing something, we will deal with you firmly and, con and summarily. And uh, because we have enough people in Kenya who can, who can, who can do this, these jobs. Under our new bold vision, of radical transformation, we must simultaneously implement policies, programs, and projects to achieve inclusive growth and at the same time undertake robust measures to eradicate corruption, wastage, and inefficiency. I have given my solemn undertaking to protect public resources during my term in office. I shall be held to account for the good performance of our country, delivery of our commitments, and the stewardship of public resources. I intend, by all means, to keep a good account of each of these mandates. I ask for your assistance, and all of us to commit to make sure that we don't disappoint the people of Kenya. In order to do this, I shall hold every officer serving in government, beginning with you people seated here, to account for both their performance in service delivery and stewardship of public resources. I shall deal with cases of negligence, misappropriation, embezzlement, theft, or other misconduct or corruption in relation to public resources summarily and decisively. You are here by duly notified. I have high expectations of you because I am confident that by now you are familiar with the workings of government, accustomed with our work rate, and fully aware of our intention to implement all our commitments. I speak to many of you uh, on phone many times I call you to my office we interact in different places I ask you questions you know that on programs on projects and and I find that many of you the people I speak to don't even know what is going on in your ministries or departments you have very scanty information. The moment I know more than you in your ministry, then you must begin to understand that something is very wrong. Because by constitution, you are supposed to advise me. Explain to me how you are going to advise me if you have less information than I do. Who is going to be advising who? I call many, many PSs. You ask them what's going on here. They have no clue. And this is your department. That is the job that you have. You are not a messenger. You are not a security person. You're not a photographer. You're not a watchman. You are the PS or the minister. And the job of the minister and the PS, you don't know. Or you don't have information. How, how do you run a ministry or a department or a parastatal if you have no information? That is the highest level of incompetence. 
So please, take time, read. There's a lot of literature on your desks. There's a lot of briefs from departments. There are a lot of briefs from all manner of places. Read. I take time myself to read. Because it's the only way you can have the correct in information for you to be able to make the right decisions. You can never, I promise you, you can never make the right decisions if you do not have the correct information. It will all be a game of guesswork. Get as much. We have many good officers. They send us briefs to our desks. You know, but because of whatever reason, people don't want to read. They don't want to understand what's going on in their, in their, in their, in their, in their state departments or ministries or, or where they, they, they're supposed to be doing. So please, let me ask you, uh, I get a lot of feedback uh, from, from the public. For, for example, I was in Kwale, and I, I stopped in uh, Likoni, and I was talking to the public, and uh, one of them t was asking me, Mr. President, uh, we haven't quite understood um, how the Hustler Fund Phase 2 is working. How do we form the groups? And I remember I called uh, CS Jalugui. I didn't find him, so I called his peers. And I found her, and I explained to her, I told her, look, the public is not understanding this. Did I call you or not on Sunday? You know, I, I told you this is what the public is saying. Please do more sensitization on Hustler Fund Phase 2. Cindy. So, feedback, you know. And, and it's not because uh, of, of, of any, we, we have to perform. You know, we have to perform. So when you hear my deputy saying, find time, travel, but travel and see the people who have hired us. You know, go, go to different parts of Kenya so that you can get feedback from, uh, from, from, from the public. And, and on and on and on and on. So um, this is what we must all, uh, when we talk about citizen-centric, it is ultimately the citizens we are, we are serving. As I have said, I wish all of you, and I, and I have said this uh, with clarity, you have my goodwill. Always, I am always available to any minister, to any C, uh, PS, to if they are not sure of what they are supposed to do, I have instructed the head of public service to be available. My economic team is here. I want them to stand up if they are here this morning. Uh, members of my team, they are, they are, they are here. Uh, Simameni, I, I'm, I'm sure, I think some of them got late also. <laughs> They should know better. So I have deployed a whole team of almost 10 people to assist every state department, every ministry. Whenever things are not clear, they are not aligned, you are not sure what, uh, what our commitment is, you are they are ready every day with an appointment. You will go through with them. If it is necessary, I normally come in there and we go through the numbers together. We go through the interventions together. We look at how best to deliver because we are one team. You know, we are one team. And my economic team is not interested in running any ministry. And I have explained this to ministers. They are not interested. They are not in competition with anybody. They just want to assist you to succeed. Because in your success, 
is our collective success. And in our collective success is the, is the success of our country. All of us must work together. I expect that the other arms of government will work with us in a collaborative manner. Everybody and every arm of government is charging their responsibility. We uh, will be supportive of the other arms of government to the extent that we can within the provisions of, of the law. I remember on my first day on the swearing in into office, I made a commitment that our country is going to be anchored on the rule of law. That rule of law is going to be front and center. And that is why we got rid of the culture of extrajudicial killing. And we, we disbanded the notorious criminal gang that was in the police that presided over those criminal activities. And I intend that the country will continue in that trajectory of the rule of law. I dare say that we did not get rid of extrajudicial killings that caused the loss of close to 200 Kenyans that ended up in Yala River, that ended up in Tana River, that ended up in Abadeas, so that we can entertain another culture of impunity, of past, present, and other leaders using violence as a currency for politics in Kenya and in so doing occasioning the loss of life of other citizens. That cannot be. The same way we, we said no to extrajudicial killings, we have said no to violence as a means of politics in Kenya. We can discuss all other matters, but violence must not be in the equation of our politics as a country. And so, Tuendele na mna hiyo, tuko pamoja kabisa, mimi na watakia heri, sisi wote tulio hapa, vile nilisema pale mbeleni, tuko na nafasi mzuri sana kama taifa, kubadilisha taifa letu la Kenya. Na sisi tulio hapa kama viongozi wa serikali kwa sasa, tuko na jukumu la kihistoria ya kubadilisha Kenya. Ndiyo tumesema katika mpango wetu, tuwe na mpango kamili ya kuhakikisha ya kwamba tuko na food security. Tunazalisha chakula na mimi na washukuru wa kulima wa taifa letu la Kenya ni wazalendo wa ajabu. Mwaka huu kazi wa kulima wamefanya haijawahi kuonekana. Ndio tuzalisha chakula we can actually double our food production in Kenya and eliminate the shame of hunger in Kenya. Vile vile tuko na mpango kamili, mpango mzima wa kuzalisha ajira katika taifa letu la Kenya kupitia mpango wa housing kupitia mpango wa digital jobs mipango mingine ya kuzalisha ajira na vile vile kukuza uchumi wa taifa letu la Kenya ndio tuongeze mapato tuondoe umaskini that plan we have a historic moment to achieve it and i am trusting you as uh, the senior most team to provide leadership working of course with our development partners and all the other good people that are working with us. I therefore remind you to pursue 
and maintain the highest professional standards and observe the principles and values of public service under Article 232.1 of the Constitution. I also encourage you to keep a copy of this performance contract in sight at all times to anchor your reflections and to focus your intentions and your actions so that we can all have a good account of ourselves a year from today. I wish you success in your work, good people, and look forward to presiding over the release of the results of your performance at the end of this financial year. Asante Nisana, thank you very much. God bless you, and God bless our great country, Kenya. Asante Nisana, thank you. Let us all rise and finish with the national anthem. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of this session. To have yourselves a wonderful afternoon.